Hi guys and welcome back to the Cassie Projects. So this week's video I wanted to do an episode of painting on ducks. The reason I'm doing this is because I had the most wonderful comment on one of my videos the other day and she said my two-year-old daughter watches your painting on duck videos every day and they're her absolute favourite. We're wondering if you would consider making an episode three. She would particularly like to see you paint the duck sitting behind you. So the duck that I had sat behind me was this ginormous duck. I can't show you the duck because I'm actually filming the intro after I've already painted it because it's Easter. I'm doing the intro last minute. So this is the duck. I know what it looks like. <laughs> so I have done the big duck especially for her. So I wanted to find out what her name was because of course I want to give credit to Orla. Thank you so much for giving me the idea to paint on my big duck and getting me to do another episode of Painting on Ducks. I hope you enjoy it. So let's get started with the prep. So what I do with my Painting on Ducks is prep them by giving them a little bit of a sand down. Whether it does anything, I'm not really sure. I wanted to turn this duck into a Pokemon. And the Pokemon that I thought would be perfect for this is Bulbasaur. Um, Bulbasaur is one of my favourites. Um, I think it is my favourite actually. So I've only got a little bit of this white clay left because in my previous video I customised a plant pot to look like Grogu from The Mandalorian which I loved. So I've only got a little bit of this white left and I was hoping that that would be enough to do this bulb shape. But unfortunately this duck is ginormous so I'm going to have to put some foil on there. It will help out with the structure a little bit but also it stops me from having to use a huge amount of clay which will probably never dry in time. So this allows me to just kind of do a little rooftop of clay on top of that. I still don't have quite enough clay so I'm going to have to get out my terracotta clay anyway um, and it doesn't really matter anyway because I'm going to gesso over the whole thing. So I'm just continuing to add more and more clay until I've got the correct shape. I'm then putting in my little sculpting tool to create these lines so this is the lines within the bulb and then I'm using my fingers just to spread that out a little bit and create this lovely bulb shape on top. Now I also need to make this dip in the middle because on the Bulbasaur it, come, it opens out a little bit um, like a proper little flower bulb and yeah so we've got that shape I'm gonna let that dry for a bit so I actually bought some more little ducks the other day. Um, I saw them and I thought they were just so adorable and they would go perfect with this mama duck. Unfortunately I'm not going to be able to do all these in the video as well but if you want to see me paint these baby ducks into other little Pokemon <laughs> then uh, subscribe to the channel and give us a thumbs up so I know that you want to see more. Now I've realised I also needed to add some ears, um, so part two of the sculpting process. My husband had a fantastic idea actually to turn it into a little hoodie, so my duck is wearing an actual Bulbasaur costume because uh, it stops the face looking too weird. Add in a huge coat of gesso over this ginormous duck which took a little while and then I let that dry. So the first duck that I painted on I used um, what they're called Angelus leather paints because I want it to still have that flexibility. The second one I did I used acrylic paint markers. On this one I'm just going to go in with acrylic paint. So next up I had to mix some paint to match my little Bulbasaur but of course I needed that bright yellow for its face and I went in with this very primary green for the bulb and then around the body it's more of a turquoisey green it's got a little bit of a blue in there and with this process it just means layering and layering on the paint until it's neat and tidy very similar to a squishy makeover actually you know you just have to keep going so you can get that detail perfect I realised that this turquoisey green was far too dark 
uh, when it dried so I've added so much white into there. Now working on the face I wanted it to look really 3D and have shadows so I've got all the shadows around the edge of the face where the hood is because that's the darkest point and then towards the front of the face that's where it's a bit lighter I added some rosy cheeks I thought that would be really cute and then as you can see I'm just adding all those tiny little details just to neaten it all up I decided to use my Posca paint marker just to neaten up the edge of the ball but I was really struggling to get it neat with my paint brushes because it's so lumpy and bumpy so that really really helped and then I blended that Posca out with my paintbrush and used it for those shadows in the creases. I've then gone in with my Posca again to add those little like square bits that are on a Bulbasaur so he's got these little triangles and little shapes across his body I suppose they're leaves aren't they yes because it's a nature Pokemon and then once it's all dry we're adding a lovely glossy varnish I'm using Liquitex professional acrylic medium gloss varnish this is wonderful to make your duck look nice and shiny there you go there is my duck I really hope you enjoyed this episode. I really enjoyed it. It was hard work trying to fit it in around the Easter holidays amongst children and animals, but we achieved it and I'm very proud of myself. Do keep watching more videos and if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. It helps out massively. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye.